Picture this. A tiny, almost invisible, translucent blob under the powerful lens of a microscope. It looks simple, but this is one of the most complex and miraculous things in the universe. It's a human blastocyst, the very beginning of a new life, formed just five days after an egg and sperm meet. This little bundle of cells, no bigger than a single grain of fine sand, holds the entire blueprint for a unique human being. Inside this microscopic sphere is a world of potential. It contains 46 chromosomes, thousands of genes, and about 6 billion base pairs of DNA. Think of it as a complete, intricately detailed instruction manual for building a person from the ground up. Everything from the color of their eyes to the rhythm of their heartbeat is encoded right there. Now, imagine a scene straight out of a science fiction movie, but it's happening in labs today. A high-precision laser, thinner than a human hair, carefully creates a tiny opening in the blastocyst's outer shell. Through this opening, a microscopic pipette, like a tiny vacuum cleaner, gently suctions out a few cells. This procedure is called a biopsy, and it's the key that unlocks a world of information. What happens next is where things get really fascinating. Thanks to incredible advances in genetic sequencing technology, scientists can take those few cells and read nearly the entire instruction manual. It's like having a search function for the book of life. They can scan the DNA, looking for specific sequences and markers. This emerging field of science uses this powerful analysis to do something truly groundbreaking. Predict what kind of person that tiny embryo might one day become. For many hopeful parents, this technology is a beacon of hope. Imagine a family that has been haunted for generations by a devastating genetic disorder. They've watched loved ones suffer and they live with the fear of passing that same condition onto their own children. For them, this genetic testing offers a chance to break the cycle. They can screen embryos to ensure they select one that is free from the specific gene that causes so much pain. It is a way to give their child the best possible start. A life free from a predetermined illness. This is, by far, the most common and widely accepted use of this technology. A powerful tool for preventing suffering. But there's another side to this story, one that's far more controversial and complex. A smaller but growing group of people are looking beyond just preventing disease. They see this genetic instruction manual not just as a way to avoid illness, but as a catalogue of traits they can choose from. They're driven by dreams of a perfect child, one destined for an Ivy League education with specific physical features or a particular personality type. They are willing to invest tens of thousands of dollars, sometimes more, to optimize their future offspring. They want to select for traits like high intelligence, specific appearances, or even a calm and agreeable temperament. This isn't just a hypothetical future. It's happening now. And some of the most enthusiastic supporters of pushing these boundaries are found in a place known for disrupting the future, Silicon Valley. Prominent figures in the tech world, including billionaires like Elon Musk and Peter Thiel, as well as leaders like Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong, have publicly expressed interest in and support for these advanced reproductive technologies. They see it as the next logical step in human evolution, using technology to guide our own development. Their perspective is often one of radical optimism, believing that we have a moral obligation to use the tools at our disposal to create healthier, smarter, and more capable human beings. This raises some of the biggest ethical questions of our time. Where do we draw the line between preventing a terrible disease and selecting for desirable traits? If we can choose a child's intelligence, height, or eye color, should we? What does this mean for the concept of human diversity? If everyone starts selecting for the same ideal traits, we could inadvertently reduce the genetic variety that makes our species so resilient. What happens to the children who are born naturally? without this genetic screening? Will they be seen as less than or disadvantaged from the start? These are not easy questions, and there are no simple answers. On one hand, the desire of a parent to give their child the best life possible is a powerful and universal instinct. Who could argue with wanting your child to be healthy, happy, and successful? From this perspective, using technology to ensure these outcomes seems like a natural extension of good parenting. We already do so much to shape our children's futures through education, 
nutrition, and environment. Is selecting their genes really so different? Proponents argue that it's a way of leveling the playing field, giving every child a shot at a great life, free from the lottery of genetic inheritance. On the other hand, the critics paint a much darker picture. They warn of a future that looks a lot like a dystopian novel where society is divided into the genetically enhanced and the naturals. They worry about a new form of inequality, one that is literally written into our DNA. This could create a world where your future is determined not by your hard work or character, but by the genetic choices your parents could afford to make before you were even born. There's also the profound question of what it means to be human. Is our humanity defined by our imperfections, our struggles, and our unexpected quirks? What do we lose when we try to edit those things away? The technology itself is also still in its early stages. While we can read the genetic code with incredible accuracy, our ability to interpret it is still limited. We know that a single gene can cause a disease like cystic fibrosis, but traits like intelligence or personality are incredibly complex. They are influenced by hundreds, maybe thousands, of genes interacting with each other and with the environment. A company might tell you an embryo has a high polygenic score for intelligence, but that's just a statistical probability. It's not a guarantee. There's no single smart gene you can just switch on. So, are parents paying for a genuine advantage, or are they paying for a false sense of control over the beautiful, unpredictable mystery of creating a new life? As this technology becomes more advanced and accessible, these are conversations we all need to have. This isn't just about science. It's about our values as a society. It's about what kind of future we want to build for the generations that will follow us. The journey from that tiny blastocyst to a fully formed person is one of nature's greatest marvels. Now, for the first time in history, we have the power to edit the instruction manual. The question is no longer can we, but should we? And that's a question we have to answer together. Thank you so much for joining me on this deep dive into a truly mind-bending topic. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video interesting and want to explore more ideas that are shaping our future, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.